Welcome traders to another Ticknell earnings report preview with me Patrick Mullaly. Before we jump into today's report as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and most pertinent to today's presentation the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine they're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. Today we are looking at Microsoft. Microsoft set to announce earnings after the New York close today. Looking for an EPS, earnings per share of $2.28 on revenue of $52.87 billion. Microsoft has posted robust profit and revenue growth in recent years, including amid the global pandemic. But strong US dollar and unusually high inflation are curbing Microsoft's growth outlook. In early June, the company lowered guidance for the fiscal Q4, which ended in June 30. Microsoft is also fighting against antitrust complaints in Europe over competition among cloud service providers, which could rein in the company's growth even further. Investors will be watching closely to see how Microsoft has navigated these and other challenges when the company reports this evening. Microsoft's fiscal year ends on June 30. Analysts predict tepid performance by Microsoft standards, adjusted EPS and revenue are both expected to grow, but at the slowest pace in recent quarters. Investors will also focus on revenue growth in Azure and other cloud services. Azure is a cloud platform that offers developers, IT professionals and enterprises a suite of tools and services that can be used for network, storage, mobile, web application services, AI, Internet of Things and a range of other computing needs. As of the end of the fourth quarter 2021, Azure had a share of roughly 22% of the global cloud market, ranking it second behind Amazon.com's Amazon Web Services. The cloud computing market is growing quickly and Azure is growing at a faster pace than Microsoft as a whole. However, Microsoft still has to compete with Amazon and Alphabet and a variety of small arrivals. This is especially important as work from home and hybrid work arrangements begun during the pandemic have staying power, which could boost the market for cloud services. Microsoft's Azure and other cloud services businesses has grown at a substantial pace, more than tripling quarterly revenue in just three years. As revenue has increased, the pace of growth has slowed. And in the Q4 uh, Fiscal year 2019, for example, Azure and cloud revenue grew by 63% year over year. Although sales have remained strong, they have failed to reach that same growth rate in the subsequent reported quarters. Growth has significantly slowed in recent quarters from 51.2% in Q4 2021 to 44.7% in Q3 2022. Now analysts expect growth to further slow to 43% in Q4 2022. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around Microsoft earnings releases. Microsoft shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings 8 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved up 0.5% in the first day of trading after the company reported earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Microsoft is more likely to trade higher one day after earnings for an average gain of 0.3%. On average, the stock has moved higher by 2.9% one week after earnings. Now, from a volatility perspective, let's see what the options market is telling us. Options traders pricing in a 5% move on earnings. However, stock has only averaged a 2.5% move in recent quarters. Finally, from a flow and sentiment perspective, there has been some notable buying 7,759 contracts of the $270 call expiring on Friday. Options order flow in general, though, has been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has 63% expecting an earnings beat. Microsoft share price has drifted down 7.9% post-earnings announcements. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcements is 7%. So let's pull up the charts now and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunities that may, uh, may be available to us in the stock. So if we look at the general pattern here, what I'm tracking is a weekly uh, ABC uh, corrective pattern that has a downside equality objective of $236. Now if we move to the daily chart, we can see I'm consolidating in a triangle. Now if the earnings come in and there's some decent guidance and, uh, and we get a pop here, I'd be using any strength into the $275 level to watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side targeting that $236 test to the downside. 
if, uh, if the earnings come in weaker and the guidance is lowered, then any move down through the trend, uh, triangle trend line support at the $245 level, again, I'll be engaging on the short side, targeting that $236. Now, once we get there, I'm going to be paying very close attention on both the daily and the weekly charts for any bullish reversal signals, because this could, uh, this could suggest the technical trade setup in terms of the correction is complete. And then we could be thinking about upside objectives back into that trend line resistance coming in at the $270 level again. At this stage, any loss of the $230 level would be a meaningful bearish development, opening a move down to the high volume node on the weekly chart there at $214. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.